Today we'll look at how you can use the render layers or output passes in SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional to fine tune the look of your final render in an image editor. So I'm just using the stock Camaro example here. And when I go to my output tools to perform a final render in Visualize Professional, we have options to enable these render layers. So there's many different types of render channels or render information that can be outputted in addition to just the default combination, which is known as beauty. And some of these options will change depending on whether you're using fast or accurate mode or other settings within the render. So the SOLIDWORKS help files linked in the description below give a nice breakdown on which layers are possible on each category of render. Here I am going to use fast mode and just do a quick render with 100 passes. And once this is done, we'll open it up in an image editor, such as Photoshop, where I'll be using the free open source tool GIMP. So my render is complete, and inside the output folder, I should have a whole bunch of files this time. Over in my image editor, what I want to do is do a file open as layers and browse out to wherever these were stored. And I'll just select all these output files as layers. So we can see when we have all of these enabled, um, we can cycle through the various outputs to see what they look like. We have the albedo or color, alpha, ambient occlusion, which will be available in the fast rendering mode, beauty, which is our default combination or finished render, we have a depth channel, diffuse, emission, if we had any emissive light sources, and many more render types. Of note here, we also get shadow for our fast mode renders, and in general, we'll get the specular layer. So I just want to show a couple of ways that I know of that we can modify our final output using these layers. So I'm going to switch to a switch to a project I've already got set up. And initially we just have our base pass here or our beauty pass. And if I want to increase the amount of shadow or floor shadow, I could take this shadow pass and change its combination method to something like subtract. And then if I show that shadow pass, we can see how as I adjust the opacity at zero, we're looking at the default amount of shadow. And then if I start to drag this up, we'll get an ex a more and more exaggerated shadow there. So uh, we could use this for just minor adjustments or go really crazy with the amount of shadow in, in post editing. Note also that you could mask off these layers to apply these effects in local areas. The ambient occlusion layer is useful with just a multiply mode. So if I turn that on, again, if we look at the ambient occlusion on its own, we'd see it's just kind of the dark areas around small fine details. So we can see as I crank this up around the handle of the car door, it gets a lot darker and around the front headlights and brake rotors also getting a lot darker as we tweak the ambient occlusion and if we want to bring out the highlights in the model we could use the specular layer for that so here i'm using it in the addition mode and if we set it down to zero we can see our again default beauty pass and if i start increasing this we'll see that all the shiny shiny highlights um, come out a little bit more and you might want to experiment with different mixing modes for this one such as uh, some of the lighting modes so they can also give kind of an interesting effect so the default beauty pass is going to be the most realistic in terms of physical accuracy but having the ability to turn on or off these different rendering effects can be really useful to help achieve your desired final look. 
if it's not necessarily a realistic look that you're going after and you want to exaggerate some of these effects. Hopefully this video was helpful and let us know in the comments section below what type of content you'd like to see next.